good stuff. All right, where'd you get that? You. Really? <laughs> 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 said you just didn't care about one. <laughs> cool. It was like a 99 percent chance that would not have a chalk board. So. <laughs> what? Or you mean it would be like a horrible yeah. thing? Yeah. yeah, this is pretty good. There seems to be this habit of letting the multiple not have to Yeah. <laughs> Hey, so you're here for a while. What? You're here until you yes. here. Yes. Cool. Do you have a place lined up in stores? Yeah, actually, um, half of our stuff is sitting there now. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, I had to like move in and make a team for something because my landlord kicked me out of the long house. That's fine. <laughs> I see. Are you renting an apartment? Did you buy a house? Uh, an apartment. apartment for now. Don't look for a house. Uh, let's see. Don't get Lyme disease. Okay. <laughs> okay. So don't go outdoors or go hiking. <laughs> yeah, that pretty much uh, sums it up. It's a dangerous occupation yeah. thing for a mathematician. Yeah. 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 Something you'll say. Totally. Oh, Connecticut is full of beautiful stuff. Oh, this is a new one. That's why I'm not Yeah, I think that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, can go, I can go as long as I want. Yeah, you can go as long as you want. I only have like six minutes left. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one to not call the latest person. So your thing is scheduled, right? I think so. I'm still waiting for Shanda Sansa, but I would say yes. Pretty good. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm very happy to wait. For as long as anybody else is. I came up with a good title for this. <laughs> good, it's good. You should write that on the board. So I guess if nobody else shows up, you just win by default. Hi. No. Okay. Yeah, we're waiting for <laughs> Shondor. Shondor is the one remaining. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not with you. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> so uncomfortable to do this. I should probably just have a baby. I want to. How do you guys decide to do this? Where's the first place we can perform that? Oh, he's not going to be a spiel for like 10 minutes. Um, how do you guys decide what will happen? Okay. We will stay. We will work with you. Good. And you will leave. And then we will yeah. talk about the weather or whatever. Thank you so much. Is that the answer? Yeah. Then you have the secret stand to take it off. You were supposed to mention that. Yeah. Shandor says he's on his way. <laughs> you tried that smartwatch yet? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. We just have a brain to brain connection. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, just for future reference, there's lots of things you don't want to see somebody else's work. 
Oh, you're not gonna like leave the room. Yeah. Right? Because <laughs> <laughs> things yeah. change, but I didn't have to like, rewrite it. Oh, no, that's good. <laughs> Some of this stuff moves in other places. Oh, it'll come out of my mouth somehow. Are you going to give that example? Yeah, yeah, it's in red. Yes. <laughs> I asked if it was more confusing. <laughs> okay, um, this is Matt. He's going to do his final exam now. Okay. Um, so the title is actually Canonical List of Floppy Varieties, even though my thesis title was listed on the thing as derived category. In it. So you don't have to worry about that. Those will not appear. All right. So here's the here's the motivating problem. So let's let's suppose we have a variety, and by this I'm just you know sketching an idea here. So it's some space, and it's given by some zero set of polynomials. And now let's assume that those polynomials actually have integer coefficients. Well, the nice thing about having integer coefficients is, well, I didn't tell you, you know, what values am I allowed to plug into these polynomials to make my space, and so if there's integer coefficients, I could plug in you know, complex numbers if I wanted to. I could plug in real numbers, just all, you know, all the real value solutions, all the complex value solutions. I could plug in rational points, look at the rational solutions. Or I could even plug in you know, FP value solutions. So this, this condition of having integer coefficients is actually really nice because we can modify what where we're thinking about the solution living. And you know, these are these are characteristic zero type things. These are sort of classical type of geometry situations. Or I could be doing geometry in characteristic B here. <laughs> so the motivating setup is that if I have a place where it makes sense to reduce things mod P. Well, I could take the reduction mod b of this thing. So, x bar, I probably won't you know, refer to this notation after this point. So, uh, the reduction mod p. So, so we're going to have to think about a little bit later what we really mean by this. But you know, in this sort of traditional setting of actual polynomials, it makes sense to just reduce the coefficients mod p and then look at what things in fp you plug in to get zero. And we'll get some sort of positive characteristic geometry going on. So, uh, so I'll say that this direction is easy. Well, there's a lot of subtleties going on if you don't start with you know, integer coefficients or something. But that's not the direction I want to think about. So the question is, you know, when can we go the other way? Now, you know, so what does that mean? Well, let's just think of something a little bit silly first. Uh, what if we have x and it's given by two polynomials, x equals 0 and x equals 0? So you're repeating, but you know, maybe your, your space and your, OK, this one's over. Right, we're going the other way, so we're starting over half p. Call it x bar. Just oh, yes. Yeah. 
So you know, maybe this space came from some abstract setting, and you don't even know that you've repeated an equation here or something. So you have to be a little bit careful. And then you say, OK, let's just naively pick some lists. So I naively pick, OK, x equals 0 and x equals e over, well, z, I guess, or something. And then I say, oops, I've made a mistake here. So, okay, this, this isn't supposed to be some sort of, you know, super enlightening example, except for the fact that we have to be very careful about just naively lifting equations. Otherwise, we could introduce some accidental relations like p equals zero. So we have to be careful by what we mean by, by going backwards, going from starting here and lifting. All right, so let's think of another way we could try to do this before, before I actually define what's going on. So one thing we could do is, you know, this is actually the main technique of all that. Oh, and now, okay, now I don't want this notation anymore, but I'll stick with it since I did it. Um, so let's say I'll write it as v mod v here. So I, I start here. Now, another thing we could do is we could, instead of trying to lift all the way to characteristic 0 first, we could try something a little bit maybe easier and try to just lift mod p squared first. So we make a step here. And I'll, I'll try to make my subscripts at this power match up. Zero, but, um, you know, we could try again, try to make another list here like this. And we could just, so we have our reduction maps like this. And, well, this bottom thing is actually making a nice sit inverse system here. And we could take the inverse limit, this would keep going, and we could keep trying to make this. And this inverse limit, this is ZP. So now, okay, now what have I done with my, my base here? Well, I'm, I've basically constructed a ring which is somehow better than Z. Z is a very strong condition, right? What, what is, you know, reducing mod P, really we just need to avoid the coefficients having P in the denominators or something, roughly speaking. So, so this ring is somehow naturally occurred when I did this. And it's somehow a better thing to think about because, well, reduction mod p makes sense here because this thing has a unique I maximal ideal and is the maximal ideal generated by e. And, you know, zp mod is maximal ideal. That is reduction mod p, and I get this first thing back. So now, okay, this picture is starting to put into place sort of the more rigorous definition I want to make about how to lift to characteristic zero, how to go backwards. So let's think about, okay, now let's think about uh, this setup and what could possibly go wrong here. Like, can we just always do this, I guess, is one question. All right, and it turns out that there's two main problems in doing this. There's two difficulties. There are two difficulties. And the first one is just going from this, you know, one of these to the next one. And that, the, the first, um, sorry, this. so uh, I'll just say the first obstruction of the lids. And okay, let's, uh, now x is a smooth projective or proper. Uh, so lives in each x. So there's some cohomological obstruction to doing each of these. No. So I mean, until this moment when you said smooth projective. Yeah. 
Like if you're just talking about the scheme, there's no obstruction at all to be trivial. So could you be a little more precise about what you mean by overwriting? You could just take the same equation multiple times, just talking about the scheme. So you want it to be geometrically reducible, or what? Like, um, what do you want? Well, you can't do I think you can't do it just by that. I don't understand. So this is. No, wait. I mean, these these questions exactly what the example you gave with x plus zero and x plus zero. Well, yeah, of course you can't just naively do that because of that. Right, so the question is, what he's asking is, why is that not? Like, what what is it? You have to find any. I mean, what what is your definition of variety? Is that like, I mean, that's not even variety. So, yeah, why why is x equal to zero? X equal to zero not a map to z. Oh, it is. That x equals zero, x equals zero oh, is. Oh, well, that's empty over z. Yeah. Over q, yeah. So you can't let it the general. Two lives over z. So what do you mean by left? That's the question. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to, I mean, eventually getting towards that definition. So, uh, if, yeah, okay. Uh, well, let's. Uh, okay, so a lift over some ring will be a flat. <laughs> <laughs> a flat morphism over a stack of that ring. And then, okay, we might want to assume that this is a local domain or something, <coughs> residue field, whatever, started over, so that we can then. Um, um, yeah. So anything where you face change back to the other thing and it's flat. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Nothing to do with your reusable. Nothing to do with anything else. Just flat. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. But um. But your your point is sort of how you prove this because locally it is unobstructed and so it's some sort of gluing condition that's obstructing patching this thing globally, and then, you know, patching conditions are some conditions on overlaps, and that gives you some class here. So. There's no thing in this, because this is the same obstruction every time. Uh, so, yeah, I could say, I could say this, the obstruction is going from i to i plus um, one, so it's here. Yeah. All right. Um, and then the other one is, well, okay, if, even if I could do all of these steps. That's not really what you mean, right? Well, I, let's see, X, I, so you want me to tensor by the ideal or something? What group here is the instruction? Uh, In this particular example, Z might be not the square of this one. What you've written there is X sub I comma T sub X sub I. Yes. Which is already a little bit. Let's see, you mean t sub x of i over. Yeah, yeah, it's a relative thing. Exactly. Is that the right thing? Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I mean the yeah the obstruction. Let's see. Well, okay, let's go back to this. <laughs> Is that an X bar? Are you, oh, now we're talking about so now we've replaced. Let's see, we replaced X bar. X is we're using X bar for the thing over Z. The left. So what should so? Um, well, okay, I don't want to get. Okay, so X doesn't this. exist. Uh, yeah, X doesn't exist. So you mean Chris R in HTML statement? Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's the first step. Mm -hmm. so what happens when we execute it? Is X first a smooth projected? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And nothing else, just a smooth projected scheme. Uh, well, let's say in this variety. variety. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is a variety. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so the obstruction is going to live in some, you're going to want to tensor by the ideal you get from the reduction 
back down to here. But uh, yeah, we're not really going to use this. So, <laughs> um, and then there's another obstruction that when you form this system, um, you could take a limit here, do the do a similar limiting process, but that that thing will not necessarily be some a flat thing over a ZB, some flat scheme over ZB. It'll just be some formal scheme. So um, another obstruction. Uh, realizing the formal limit. So the ring that we actually want to be using here is something called the ring of bit vectors. So um, now let's assume K is algebraically closed and the characteristic of K is P. And for technical reasons later, I'll just assume now that this is bigger than the dimension of whatever variety of okay. <laughs> Now there's a similar ring to ZP that, so ZP uh, we formed by making sort of extensions of Z mod P, but here we're starting with an algebraically closed field, so it's not clear that these types of things, you know, how do you make those things? But uh, it does exist a ring, well, let's just say a complete EBR. W of A. Uh, with the same types of properties we want. So with property <coughs> that the fraction field of this thing is a characteristic zero field and uh, it makes sense to reduce mod p and we get our k back. So uh, we reduce on the maximum ideal. It's generated by P. Uh, yes. Uh, it's, yeah. I mean, it has other properties, so it's absolutely unramified. Okay, so so now um, now we're really sort of doing characteristic zero or characteristic P geometry because now we're thinking in terms of an algebraically closed field. And so, well, I already wrote it over there, a lift to characteristic zero over W is just a flat family over W whose reduction is the original. And now we don't, uh, you know, it's possible that there's a lift over something other than W and not over W, but that's, um, you know, that's a very subtle issue. Um, so what we kind of want to study is not just lifts over W, but we want to package all that stuff together into a functor where we consider all deformations, so it's like the deformation functor of this original 
smooth protective variety over the algebraic equivalence field with these properties is I'm going to allow myself to plug in uh, Artinian W algebras with residue field K. And it's going to, if I plug in some ring, it's going to output uh, the collection of these things. Um, you know, these things. And there's going to be so it lifts over A of this original variety, and it's going to be modulo some equivalence. And there's a lot of subtleties that go into properly defining what exactly we want this to be. So, um, because you know, in order to we want it to be you know, actually a pro-representable home pair, so we're going to want to make sure our definition kills off automorphisms and things. All right. Okay, so the, the word blobby yow was in um, my title, so let me now define blobby yow. I'm just saying that a non vanishing form is not. Uh, okay, this is where. There's a difference between a non zero form and a non vanishing form, right? I think it's where global is modifying non vanishing <laughs> rather than form. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we know it. He knows what he's talking about. But. And we have these co homological definitions. So basically, all of these that can vanish do vanish because the zero and the n one cannot. Okay, so um, some examples: one-dimensional ones. Well, okay, by my algebraically closed assumption, these are just elliptic curves. Um, Two-dimensional ones. These are uh, something called K3 surfaces. Have you heard of those? And uh, some of the main points of this talk are going to be about threefolds, but I'll just call those blobby at threefolds. Okay, so you know what is known about the lifting? Properties. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, three. So an example of a property of three fold can be a quintic hypersurface uh, on the square. So uh, you know, elliptic curves are cubics. K three surfaces are quartics. Clavier three folds are quintics. In the hypersurface case, there's complete intersection for intersecting other things. There's ones that are not made of that form. These ones you could have a double cover of P two ramified over a sextic. There's lots of ways to construct all these things. <coughs> okay, so. 
So let's move on. Let's sort of think about a history of what can be. So the one-dimensional case is actually done because, well, it turns out, you know, people didn't like this. The obstruction to lifting, if we use that main method, were they were two cohomological conditions. Oh, and then write the other one down, and both of them. So homological obstructions are in H2 of some coherent sheet. And that's zero because um, the because we're a curve, so H2 is zero. So the obstruction vanished, there's there's no obstruction to lifting. And that, that root works for all curves. So if you are a smooth projective curve, then you lift to characteristic zero. Or is it a show if you just take any wire stress equation and lift it? Uh, or an elliptic curve. Yeah. I mean, if you had like a twisted cubic or something, you'd probably. Or you're going to algebra if you. Oh. I'm scared about saying that for any. Oh, yeah, yeah. For the Columbia case, okay, yes, yeah. 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 All right. Um, so, well, that's sort of you know an exercise. I'm not sure there's actually a named theorem for that. But now this problem gets significantly harder once you go up one dimension, and we have named theorems. So, so in 1981, the lean. Uh, all K3 surfaces. And this is a you know fairly long and delicate proof. So this is not like, oh, let's just try something with these obstructions and things. You have to you have to do a lot of work for some cases of these. So that's the two dimensional case. Uh, next case. Well, I'll call this an example. In 1999, Hiro Kago made an example of uh, their exists. Well, the uh, equals and characteristic needed three that do not lift. Can I do you mean over the vectors or over any? Over anything. They don't even lift mod p squared. Yet. They're totally obstructed. You would you assume that the characteristic is greater than the dimension. Uh, two block words ago. Yes, <laughs> that is true. So that is actually um, exactly w what people started thinking. Well, all of our theorems we want to apply for all of this type of stuff, we have p bigger than the dimension. Is that the thing that's going on? Yeah. So for the k keys, um, does it work in characteristic two? Uh, it does work in characteristic two, but it's harder. And I think you have to lift. You can't have their lifted vectors for super singular ones. They get the lift. Over only, only characteristic two. Yeah, yeah. so the bigger, bigger range. Of yes. Yep. Ramifications. Root two. Yeah. Just. Yep. Um, and then in 2003, so uh, um, same. For characteristic two and three. So there, he made examples in characteristic two and three that do not lift to characteristic zero, but his uh, characteristic three example is different than this one. Is it like just three examples total now? Yes. Or are there families? It's just three. 
Uh, I would, okay, uh, yes, yes, there's just three, yeah. Um, so, yep, that's my next thing. So, as of 2014, it seems that uh, these are the only examples. And so, this, character, this characteristic being less than or equal to the dimension seems to be a problem, but it's actually possibly something else going on, which I'll explain in a second. Alright, please lift to a bigger ring than the vertical No, yeah, these don't lift to characteristic zero at all. I think actually, um, I know for a fact this one does not lift mod d squared. I don't, these ones maybe lift mod d squared, but not something higher. Oh, yes, yes. At least one of these was mod d squared. I remember because uh, that's people were checking, oh, this is uh, how just a round spiral sequence generate, and that's how they show that. Um, all right. Okay, so let's take a second and think about how do we know these don't work? So, well, let me just first uh, <laughs> give you an example, or give you what Schroeder's example is. So the Schroeder's example is actually a K3 vibration over P1. So the fibers here are K3. And now, a nice thing about realizing this as a vibration is you can actually we know a lot about K3 surfaces, we know a lot about P1, so you know we use some general machinery here to compute that the third L addict Betty number is zero. So you just do this by somehow comparing the fibers to the base and work this out. All right, so now uh, let's just think in characteristic zero. So you know, if this lifts to characteristic zero, let's say y. I'm sorry, is little k like f2, or is it some function field, or what? Little bit of x. You're over a field of characteristic two with zero. Yeah. So, I mean, what is it F2, F3, or some big fight? No, no, yeah, algebraically close. Okay, like F2 bar? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's not a function tool. No, 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 okay. not a function tool. Okay. So the example is the same for F2 or for F3? In this case, you do have one character, so you have one character, so you both taking this way? Uh, yes, both are given this way, although the construction is different. <laughs> it turns out they both are K3 fibers. Um, Okay, so in characteristic zero, we have something mod theory. So okay, this we'll think of this as the geometric generic fiber of the length or something, or over an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. And Hodge theory tells us well, we could try to compute the Durham or singular Betty numbers um, just by looking at the Hodge numbers. So. All right. Okay, so uh, if you're unfamiliar with Hodge theory, it says this breaks up as a sum, and the sum is over where these superscripts add to three. And the kolobi yau condition says, well, this is trivial, so h0 of this is one dimensional. So I'll just even say that this is greater than the dimension of, I'll just say b3, is certainly greater than or equal to one. It's actually greater than or equal to two because this is also one dimensional. 
And then a comparison theorem tells us that this would have to be bigger than or equal to this one. So that's a contradiction. If it looks to characteristic 0, then the third Betty number has to be at least 2. And it's not, so it doesn't look. So people had to come up with some sort of, you know, alternate techniques to figure out, you know, how do you even prove something doesn't lift at all? And here's one way to do it. Okay, so yeah, let's just note really fast that so even though that was Schroer's example, this is actually how both or all three examples are proved to not work. So uh, all examples don't work for this reason. So these are something, so that B3 equals zero, that's something called being super singular. And my guess is that it has more to do with the super singularness than it does with the characteristic, although it's very possible the characteristic is also a problem. Okay, so, so these are super singular Flavia threefolds. On the other on the end of the spectrum is something called an ordinary Galapia Regal. You should just think of that as being analogous to an ordinary elliptic curve, if you know what that is. So, uh, uh, yeah, X. I guess I'm using this note. I can drop this notation. I knew that would happen. Uh, if this is an ordinary Galapia Regal. That is zero, then the in the prior group is zero. And so, what I would like in the future for someone to figure out is can you produce a non listable ordinary floppy out label using this criteria? Try to you know, make t in the prior group, then it won't lift. And the uh, you know the key point here is that this ordinary condition, whatever it is, this implies that B three is not equal to zero. It would necessarily have to be a different example if you were to use this. You expect this? Did you expect or hope for this to be a complete classification of ordinary Flavia threefold? No. <laughs> yeah. It's. I mean, it's even possible that like maybe this just never even happens. Like not having whatever. I just negated too many times. So it's just to say there aren't examples of power. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The only known examples of non-liftable ones are the ones I gave you, and those were all super singular. They were not this ordinary. Do they have uh, non-zero? That is a really good question. <laughs> uh, I think that's probably hard to compute, but it's, they probably have for our B torsion would be my guess. We're around that with the no super singular examples that have B torsion. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm guessing super singular probably have B torsion. So you think you're guessing all super singular? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, that's no, the feature torsion and the power. Yeah. I mean, that's only based on the K3 case, and that's that's pretty different, though. So, uh, so it is true for the yeah the feature torsion and the bar group of a super singular K3 surface is big. Well, but I think it's even worse than that if you extend the base field, it gets bigger. Upgrade the base field extensions, so you can make the feature torsion and the bar group uncountable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is this condition does come up in the like, thing type things. Mm -hmm. You have an example where the of an ordinary one that does lift for the Brower group is not trivial. Uh, yes. 
but only because I know there exists ones in characteristic zero with non trivial over harder. So then you could reduce non PD. <laughs> so, but yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, why, why do people care? So, you know, why care about lifting? It's uh, other than the fact that, you know, now I've sort of unraveled that something bizarre is going on here. Like, sometimes you can lift, sometimes you can't, of course. That makes it a pretty interesting question that you can prove that both happens and you don't know why. But um, for this, oh, actually, I skipped something. Uh, okay. So, uh, does this mean that then the, you have a, an ordinary LVO in this is zero, then the, the girl group has no coercion at all? Uh, let's see. If, I it think you would have coercion for some people. And then you reduce, so you would lift that. And then so there's, I mean, there's probably infinitely many super singular primes. I see. So, and so then the, so that means that the torsion on the power group corresponds to primes for which the re reduction is super singular. Or not ordinary. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't told, those aren't the only two cases. There's the oh, ordinary, the right. super singular, and there's a lot in between two. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. In fact, the whole broader distortion. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so, sort of what kind of made me think. So, particularly, your question is, you know, is that, that seems to imply the broader is fine. Right. Which is somewhat related to the take conjecture. <laughs> <laughs> this type of thing is going to come up in a second. Um, only I won't tell you why. It's like right. underlying some stuff coming up there. <laughs> okay, so you know why? Well, one reason we might care is that Hodge theory exists in characteristic zero. Um, uh, and we have something called the Frobenius map, and this this induces some filtration. In characteristic P on an appropriate uh, cohomology group. And what we might want to do is we might want to try to align these two things so that we can pass information back and forth. Because this gives some non trivial information that you can't read off in, uh, in characteristic zero. This gives some non trivial information. I mean, you can read it off in characteristic P sometimes. Um, but so you might want to try to align these to maximize uh, how much information you can pass back and forth when you're able to lift. And that's the idea behind a canonical lift. So a canonical lift uh, as these operations aligning. And I'll give you a better way to think about this later in a second. But I don't have much time. Okay, so the way that you prove some sort of canonical lift exists is very different sounding than this. Well, let me actually just point out one, one application of the canonical lift. So uh, Nygaard, which I'll state the theorem that proves this in a second, uh, used canonical lists to prove a case of the Tate conjecture for our favorite purposes. And so this is, you know, this is a very major conjecture. It's somehow like the positive characteristic version of the Hodge conjecture. So it's, it's not known for very much money things. Okay, so how do you go about proving? So again, this this notion of a canonical lift actually can be used to, to get some real information. So 
Yeah, yeah. So, so really quickly what you mean by a tape injection. Because tape did a lot of injections. Yeah, yeah. So in the case of a surface, you have the turn class map from analytic homology. This would be a one. Um, and the take conjecture says that this is surjective. Oh, yeah, yeah. So basically, all classes that look like they should come from geometry actually do come from geometry. That's why it's somehow the Hodge conjecture. All right, so how do you prove something like this? Well, this is the content of what uh, you know called serotate theory, because or what I call that at least, uh, <laughs> because uh, serotate in 1964 produced an isomorphism which gave you a canonical. Okay, so so okay, if you have an elliptic curve. There's a certain p divisible group that's attached to this, and this is e p infinity, zero limit over the p to the n torsion points. So the elliptic curve has a group law on it. You can think about the p to the n torsion points. Take the limit over this. This is something called a p divisible group, and uh, you know. Eight. Um, and it, sa it says that, remember, we had that deformation pointer, uh, any conditions, the ordinary. They actually did this for actually all of the alien varieties, but I'll state it this way since we're talking about floppy outs. Uh, that this, the natural map on deformation functors is an isomorphism. Now, why is this sort of shocking? Well, what is this saying? This is saying so, somehow that if I can lift just the p to the n torsion points, then I can produce a lift of p. And, uh, and why does this give you a canonical lift? Well, this has a group structure on it. So the lifts to w, say, has a group structure. One of those lifts corresponds to the identity element. And so one of the lifts of the elliptic curve goes to the identity element. And that lift is the canonical lift. Yeah, so uh, the E, uh, how do I say this? The lifted E uh, maps to the identity is the canonical lift. So this is, I think, a sort of easier way to think about it. All right, and now I just had this this take conjecture thing by Nagard and the, the paper that proves it. He does the exact same thing for a case of this in 1985. I do want to assume you know, p bigger than 2 here again. Uh, then there exists some psi p to the big group attached. So that the natural map on deformation functors is an isomorphism. So again, by the same theory of p-divisible group, this side has a group law, so one of these maps to the canonical lift. So that's so now we're you know getting a picture of how this serotate isomorphism is tied to the canonical lift. Uh, 
the x is an ordinary threefold. And now I have to actually assume quite a few extra conditions here. The b bigger than 3 shouldn't be surprising. But since we don't know the limit, I do need to assume that it is liftable. As an ordinary quadrilateral threefold would be bigger than 3. It's liftable. I need some other stuff like the crystalline homology is bigger than 3. Um, and okay, I think that's it. Uh, then there exists. And so effectively, you know, the moral of that is uh, under some conditions, ordinary body on three poles have canonical lists. And you shouldn't think of these, okay, there's a lot of conditions here, but they're, they're all generic conditions, so they're not that bad. Well, I I'm done. That's it. So I don't know if that was. Uh, <laughs> so is part of the theorem the existence of the theta dual group? Yeah, that is a major part of this theorem. It's not at all obvious that this thing exists. Uh, let's take characteristic zero and define up the isomorphism, and, and in the unknown isomorphism space. Uh, okay. In other words, why does it say canonical lists? Such a funny application of the Well, it's because there's an A, three folds. A, well, we have three folds, have they canonical? Uh, is it canonical? Yeah, yeah, there's only one if you think about it in this. Yeah. It's definitely not clear the other definition of the Hodge operation. Yeah. yeah. What about this question? Yeah, so can you have, so uh, I would, you can definitely have different lists of the same thing. So there's there's families of lists to characteristic zero. Yes, that is correct. Yes. Um, I don't think you can have different things that lift to the same thing. Wait, yeah, of course, you can have different things that lift to the same thing. Because by definition, what is, they, what is the same thing? Yeah. What? Wait, there's, there's a question. What is the question? <laughs> if they reduce to the same thing, then they're the same thing. This question was if you have two. You have x and y, uh -huh. and you have lips of them, the lips are I guess your question is, is over the yeah. generic, over the fraction? Uh, uh, so you did generate. Is that what you're asking? Or, or over the ring of x. So you did general factors are isomorphic? That's the question you should have been asking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that probably can happen. What can you well, include in the special? Uh, they're probably by No, actually, let's see. Well, of course you can fill in a special fiber in different ways. So, um, I'm just asking if it's on force. <laughs> I mean, 